Oh God, right. Okay, so thank you for joining me today. I'm glad to see so many of you um, have made the effort to come today, the start of your half term. So we're starting in child's pose, as I say. So it's up to you if you want your knees together or apart here, but big toes touching at the back of your mat. And then just folding over your legs, bringing the forehead down to the floor or maybe putting the hands underneath the head to make a little pillow and just resting here. Okay, so if any of you have got particularly sensitive knees, you can always put a blanket sort of um, at the back of the knees just to soften off the knee joint. We're not going to be here for too long, just a couple of minutes just to get some breath awareness. So find that position that's nice and comfortable, close down the eyes and just take some nice big long breaths in and out. So not particularly trying to achieve anything with the breath or make it any particular length at all, but just breathing in and out through the nostrils if we can, maybe sigh it out through the mouth. That's a really nice way to just cleanse the breath. So breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. And really make a loud sighing sound on the exhale. It's a good way of just releasing anything, any stagnant energy, any stagnant breath. Um, also good for releasing tension as well. So just breathing in and out. And then I want you to start sending the breath into your back ribs. So we always, when we breathe, we talk about expanding the front ribs um, and inflating the lungs and letting the rib cage rise, but also think about the back ribs and really open up any spaces into your back body. And we can also think about the um, lower back here as well, because child's pose is a really lovely way to stretch out the lower back. So breathing into the whole of the back body, whether it's the lower back or the back of the ribs. Finding any little spaces and then just breathing into them and trying to make those spaces a bit bigger. So you can rock your forehead as well, rock the head, sorry. So rolling the forehead side to side. That's another message to the body to start to calm down and to relax. And just let the head rest wherever it feels most comfortable. Soften off through the cheeks, the jaw, let the belly be soft as well, so you may feel it balloon onto or between the legs. But really sending that breath into the back body. As you exhale, let the bottom sink down onto the hips a little more. Let your shoulders be relaxed as well. So if you have put your arms out in front, just make sure that the elbows are touching the mat so the shoulders can be soft. Lovely. Okay, so before we start moving, I want you to set a focus or an intention for practice. Did you come to find movement? Did you come to find mental stillness? Did you come for a stretch? Whatever reason brought you to your mat, I want you to just set that as a focus in your mind. And use that. So when you find yourself getting distracted during practice, you can just bring that back into the front of your mind to refocus. Okay, another couple of rounds of deep breaths in and out. And I want you to try and maintain this long, slow breath throughout your practice today. All right, let's start walking the fingertips forward. So taking them up towards the top edge of the mat, spreading the fingers out nice and wide. Middle finger is pointing forward. So the elbow should be lifted now. And then come up onto your fingertips. So tenting the hands, so high onto the fingertips. And then creep the hands even further forward as you push your bottom back towards your heels. Take a breath in here. As you exhale, bring the palms of the hands back down onto the floor and inhale, come up onto your hands and knees. So not really worrying just yet about where the hands and the knees are in relation to hips and shoulders, but just find some movement to rock forward and back. Just rocking in a way that feels nice to your body. Okay, and then let's now bring the knees directly underneath our hips and make sure that the hands are underneath our shoulders so we're in our strong tabletop position. So there should be a gap between your knees here. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, push your bottom back onto your heels and then slide your chest forward 
to come in, to bring yourself down onto your tummy on the mat. So hands underneath the shoulders, feet are pushing into the floor and then just lift the shoulders, lift the chest. So very tiny amount of pressure going into the hands. Exhale, lower the forehead down. Inhale, lift the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale, lower the chest down. Let's do that once more. So just lifting up the chest, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Exhale, lower the chest, forehead back down to the floor, push up into your tabletop. Now tuck your toes under. So tuck in those toes, move your bottom back onto your heels and then bring your hands directly in front of your knees. So you're in a little um, kneel, knelt toe squat. So just check that all 10 toes are tucked under because sometimes the little toe can escape. Come up into a kneeling position. If this is too much, you can always untuck. We're just gonna be here for a few moments just to stretch out the toes. Take your arms out into a crucifix and then wrap the right arm underneath the left. So elbows are together. And then if you can bring palms together in prayer or maybe just grab your thumb. So this is eagle arms. So making sure that the elbows are level with the shoulders and then push your elbows forward to open up between the shoulder blades. So we've still got those toes tucked if that's okay. As you inhale, raise your elbows to the ceiling. And as you exhale, bring your elbows into your tummy, so round the spine. And then again, inhale, lift the elbows up. And then exhale, round, elbows come into the tummy once more. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, last time, just round and pull the elbows in. And then release back to centre, release the arms out and wrap them the other way. So left comes under right. So the same thing, eagle arms, just the other way around. Elbows are shoulder height, push them forward. So you're opening up between the shoulder blades. So three inhales, so lift up on the inhale. Elbows to the ceiling, exhale, elbows into the tummy. Good, inhale, lift them up. And exhale, bring the elbows in. Last time, lift up on the inhale. And then exhale, rounding, elbows in, come back up to neutral, release your hands, bring them onto the floor, untuck your toes and just bash out the feet. So the toes should feel nicely stretched. Give them a little circle, a little wiggle behind you. And then tuck them under once more, lift the hips up, keep the knees bent to begin as you push your chest back to your thighs. So push down through your hands. Push your chest back to your thighs and then we'll pedal the legs. So bending one leg and extending the opposite heel to the floor. Just take a breath or two there and then change legs. So bending one, straightening the other so that we can pedal out our dog. Do a few more of these just to loosen up the hamstrings. So just slowly walking the dog. And then find stillness if that feels okay. So find stillness in your downward facing and just check out your inverted V shape. So you should feel the power from like your heels all the way up the back of the legs to the hips and then back down from the hips to the wrists. So nicely inverted, give the head a bit of a shake. So just release out the neck. So we have space between the ears and the shoulders. And then from here, let's tiptoe, little steps, tiny steps, walking our feet towards our hands. You can come up onto fingertips. So slowly walk your feet to the top of the mat. Knees can bend, that's fine. And then once we're here, soften the knees, grab onto opposite elbows and hang in a ragdoll position. So we're just folding over the legs and then sway from side to side. Aiming to lengthen the side body as we sway. And letting the head go down towards the feet. Okay, let's release our arms down to the floor and really slowly roll up the spine to come into standing. Head comes up last. Once the head comes up, take your arms up to the ceiling, touch your palms together and look towards your hands. Pull the navel in towards the spine so the core is active. Exhale, hands to prayer, heart center. Good, now bring the feet together so big toes are touching. Turn your palms to face forward. Give your shoulders a roll back and down. Good, into Tadasana, our mountain posture. Take a breath here, breathe in. And out, let it go. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Look up, exhale into forward fold. 
Hands come onto the shins, lengthen through the spine, halfway lift. So just hold here for a few breaths, extending from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Exhale, forward fold, hands to the floor, step back, right foot. Step it all the way back. Now just sink nice and deep into that lunge position. Fingertips are at the top of the mat. Now just lift the chest and look forward. So you should feel a lovely stretch coming through the hip flexor here. Push that right heel towards the back of the room. Push it as far back as you can to get that leg nice and straight. And then step back with your left foot as well, coming into a plank position, engaging everything, driving the space between your shoulder blades towards the ceiling. Breathe in here. As you exhale, lift your hips, push your heels down, coming into downward facing dog. Good, now come forward into plank. Lower your knees down. Let's bring chin and chest to the mat. Chin and chest come to the mat. Release yourself to lay down onto your tummies. Push through and into a back bend. So lifting the chest, looking forward. So we don't need to fully straighten the arms. They can stay bent, just depending on how the back feels. Get your shoulders away from your ears, look forward. And then exhale, coming back through tabletop, tuck the toes, lift the hips and into downward facing dog. So just a slight variation on the vinyasa. Coming forward, so walking again with steps forward to the top edge of the mat. Hands come onto the shins, halfway lift, so lengthen through the spine. Exhale, soften the knees, forward fold, fold over the legs, come up on the inhale. So use your arms, sweep the arms up to the ceiling. Look up, exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, hands can be on the floor or on your shins, lengthen. Fold again, hands to the mat, step back, left foot, sink into your runner's lunge. So keeping your fingertips or your hands either side of that front foot, straighten that back leg. So push the heel back in space. Now lift the chest and look forward. See if you can drop your hips a little bit deeper. Lovely. So you should be feeling a left hip flexor stretch here, hopefully. Everything else is engaged. So it's in really strong posture. Now step back into plank. Both feet together, back of the mat. Both heels push back, both shoulder blades push up. Good, lift the hips, push the heels down, downward facing dog. Forward to plank, lower the knees, bringing chin and chest to the mat. Keeping those elbows really tight to the ribs, sliding the chest through and forward into your cobra position. So opening up the chest, finding back bend. So look forward or up. And then exhale through tabletop, toes tuck, hips lift and push back, downward facing dog. Good, just take a breath here. Let's rock the hips from side to side. Just see how that feels. Lovely, okay, let's lift up onto the toes. Drop both of your heels to the left side. So your heels drop to the left. Then we bend both of the knees and push your chest back towards your thighs. And you should feel a stretch coming through the right side of the body. Keep pressing down through both of your hands. Then bring it back to center, lift high up onto your toes again. Drop both of your heels over to the right. And then bend your knees. Take your chest back towards your thighs. Push your feet down to the floor. You should feel a stretch through your left side. Keep pushing through those hands. Good, bring it back to center, high up on the toes. Forward into plank. Lower the knees, chin and chest to the mat, elbows are tight. Push through, back bend. Tuck the toes, hips lift downward facing dog and then walk your hands to your feet. So now we're going to the back of the mat, all the way to the back. Staying folded over, the knees can be soft if you wish. Now bring your feet, the big toes don't need to touch, but close together. And then inhale, come up on the inhale. So sweep the arms up to the ceiling, reach up, bring the hands into prayer and then sit your bottom down as if you're sitting in a chair. So chair posture. All right, so if you look at your knees, you should be able to see your toes. All right, so we don't wanna be leaning forward. You want to try and push your bum back. The weight is in your heels. Try and open the chest. Hands are in prayer. Push the prayer, the palms into each other. So thumbs are in heart center. Breathe into the chest. As you exhale, sit deeper, engage your tummy. All right, so we don't want the bum out. Tuck it in. We want to tuck the bum under so that the lower core is nicely 
activated so the lower back is protected keep sitting deeper i'm talking to try and distract from what's going on with your legs so keep sitting deeper with each breath let's get those legs working on the next inhale breathe into your chest and then exhale hands to the floor lift your hips to the sky release off bring those hands onto your shins now and lengthen halfway lift and exhale fold over your legs take hold by the, by the back of your calves and pull your forehead towards your shins now take weight into the balls of your feet and lift your tailbone high and hopefully you feel a stretch coming through the glutes and into the top of the hamstrings pull the belly in and out of the way so you can go deeper taking your head closer to your big toes and really pull against the back of your legs to squeeze yourself in a little bit tighter good keep taking that weight forward as if you're about to face plant but you don't hopefully all right release the hands to the mat walk it forward into plank finding that nice and strong plank position and then from here push back to downward facing dog lovely all right we're going to lift the right leg up into the air so just lifting the leg keeping the hips nice and square leading with that heel and then from here, bring your knee towards your nose and then step it in between the hands. Okay, so stepping the right foot between the hands. Un drop the back knee, untuck the back toe. And then if we come up, we should be in a low lunge position. Knee is always over ankle here, yeah? Reach your arms up to the ceiling. Reach up. Relax your shoulders. I'm just gonna turn myself around. Relax the shoulders, then dropping that right hand onto that front knee. Reach up with the left and then take it over for a side bend. Now this hand can stay here or it might reach the floor. I don't want you to lean forward. We're going to the side. We can just rest on the knee and reach over. If you want to take it to the floor, you're more than welcome. So breathing into the side body, you should feel a stretch from your knee all the way up to your top finger. And then we might be able to look up towards that top hand. Engage the core to help you with the balance and then reach and go over a little bit further if you can. Well done. Bring that left hand down so it's next to your front foot and then take the right arm up. So you should be in a twisted half lunge. The back knee is down, trying to get the arms into a vertical line, looking towards the top hand. Good, and breathe. As you re inhale, reach higher. As you exhale, let's move that right shoulder back a touch. So we're starting to turn the chest towards the ceiling as well. Lovely. Fill up the chest with your breath. Exhale, release the hand to frame the foot. Tuck the back toe, step back to plank. Let's take a vinyasa. So either knees lower or chaturanga. It's up to you. So knees, chin, chest. Push through, back bend. Take it back to downward facing. Lovely, lift the left leg up. So same on this side. Left leg lifts, the heel is flexed. So the hips are nice and square. Then bring the left knee slowly forward towards the nose, then step it in between the hands. The back knee goes down, the back toes untouch, untuck. Come up and into your low lunge. So arms to the sky, shoulders are relaxed. Dropping the hand onto the knee. So left hand onto left knee, right arm reaches up and then goes over for a side bend. So remember fingertips can come to the floor if they reach. It does help you with your balance, but just try not to compromise the position. So you don't want to be dropping forward. We want to be going over to the side and then extend the arm maybe look towards the top hand if it feels okay for the neck if it's all right for your balance so you'll need to be using all of the toes on your left foot to help you balance here good as you exhale release that hand down so it's next to your front foot so then the left arm can then extend towards the ceiling into that twisted half lunge really reach those fingertips up Try and get a vertical line with the arms. So inhale, reach higher. As we exhale, pull the left shoulder back. So we're opening the chest. So we've gone past that vertical line, opening the chest. So the left chest is reaching towards the ceiling as well. Really breathe into that stretch. 
Nice. Awesome, all right, let's release the hand down, frame the foot, tuck your back toe under, step back and into your plank position. And then lower, chaturanga or knees, chin, chest. So chaturanga, we just don't lower the knees down. Push through into back bend and then exhale, coming into your downward facing dog. Good, just release out, take a breath there. Push your heels to the floor, then walk your hands to your feet again. So going towards the back of the mat, bring your feet a little closer to each other. Drop your bottom down. We're going back into chair. So sweep the arms up towards the top corner of the room. Tuck your tailbone under. Good, look to where your hands are reaching. If it's too much for the shoulders, hands can be in prayer at heart center. Now I want you to really breathe into the chest. As you exhale, just bring the hands down and tap next to your feet. And then inhale, legs stay as they are, just bring the arms up. And then exhale, tap next to your feet. Good, inhale, arms up. Exhale, tap. Last one, inhale, lift up. Exhale, forward fold, straighten the legs, fold over. Put your hands on the floor, try and take weight into the balls of your feet. Lift your tailbone as high as you can. Good, now soften off and roll up the spine nice and slowly, taking the arms up to the ceiling. Touch the palms together and exhale, bringing the hands into prayer at heart center. Well done, hopefully you feel a little bit taller. All right, so standing at the back of the mat, feet are together, turn the palms to face forwards. Take an inhale, lift the arms up and exhale, fold forward. Bring your fingertips to the mat, let's walk it forward and come into our downward facing. So find that position, making sure that the feet are hip distance and the hands are shoulder distance apart. Give the head a shake, release the neck tension. Let's take our next part of the flow. So lifting the right leg up into the air. So right leg lifts, big step. Bring it forward between the hands. You can always double step it if you need to. So into that runner's lunge position, fingertips are at the mat, lift the chest, look forward. Now, push into your front foot and come up into high lunge. So the arms are coming towards the ceiling now, pull the rib cage back in. So we wanna keep the core nicely engaged. So core is strong here. All right, to help with balance, just bring your hands into prayer. And then this back knee is going to come forward towards our chest. So as we push into our right leg, bring your left knee up in front of you into your chest. So we're here. Then the eagle arms that we did at the beginning, we're going to do eagle. So cross the left leg over the right. And if you can, tuck your toes behind your right calf. If you can't, we can just balance them on the floor. So left is over right. Okay, then the arms come out and left arm goes under the right. So left under, we cross the elbows and either take our prayer or hold a thumb, or you can just hold opposite shoulders if that's easier. So this is full eagle. So elbows want to be shoulder height, push them forward, squeeze your legs together, squeeze your arms together, and then see if you can sit down, not to the floor obviously, but just sit as deep as you can just to get into those legs. Now, try not to lean forward. We want to keep the spine nice and tall. Good. So squeeze everything. All right, let's try challenge with a balance. So keep the arms as they are, unravel the legs. This left leg is going to go back into warrior three. So we can just balance it on the floor or try and lift it up to make a capital T shape with the body flexing the back foot. It's a lovely balance challenge. Release your hands down to the top of the mat, step the foot back, step the other one back to meet it, plank. Well done, vinyasa from here. So knees, chin, chest or chaturanga. Push through, back bend, downward facing dog. Wonderful, well done. So you should feel a difference in your two legs. We'll even that one up now. Good, so let's try the other side. So lift the left leg into the air with a nice flexed foot and then step it forward in between the hands. 
Okay, so starting with a high lunge. So coming up into a high lunge position. So we're bending deep into that left knee. Now we're going to power into that left leg. Bring your hands into prayer first. Power into your left leg as you bring your right knee up and into your chest. Get that balance first. Then wrap the right leg over the left. Tuck the toes, if you can, behind the calf. If not, just balance them on the floor next to you. So tuck them in if you can. Then the arms out. Right arms going under the left. Elbows cross. And then we bring the hands into prayer. So elbows, shoulder height, push them forward. Engage the core, then sit down a touch, but don't lean forward. Try and keep the shoulders pushing back. Good. Squeezing the arms and legs so there's no gaps between either the arms or the legs. Keep the breath long and deep. This is a really good detoxification posture and a good balance challenge too. Okay, so taking another breath here. We're going to release the leg, but keep the arms wrapped as we push that right leg back into warrior three. Remember, it can just be big toe on the mat if you need it to be, or lift the leg up to try and get a capital T shape. Just gaze past your fingertips. Good. Straighten and strengthen both of your legs to help with the balance. Then release your hands to the floor. Step that right foot all the way back. Step the left foot all the way back. Plank, lower, chaturanga or knee, shin and chest. Push through to back bend, drop your knees onto the floor, sit back and take a child's pose. And just release here. <sighs> well done. Good, that was good work. So just taking some breaths here. So we should feel nicely warmed up and challenged with a few little cheeky balances there. Okay, so we're going to continue working with our eagle because um, it's just a really good way of detoxifying the body and just kind of getting rid of any stagnant energy that we've got going on. So if you come up and into your downward facing dog, and then we're going to go to a wide leg stance. So turning whichever way works for you so that you can, for the best way for where your screen is basically. So you want to be in a wide leg stance. Okay, so checking that your the outside edges of your feet are parallel with the edges of your mat. So you don't want duck feet, so you don't want your toes turning out and you don't want to be pigeon-toed either. So get your feet parallel with the edges of the mat. Just bring your hands onto your hips as you stand, okay? So see what's comfortable. Go as wide as you feel comfortable. Some people, if it's too much, just bring it in a little bit, okay? And also if you've got, um, tight hamstrings, you may want to use blocks or cushions or something, because we are going to be doing some forward folds. So, all right, so just make sure you're in a comfortable position, basically. And then we're going to repeat those eagle arms. So start with your arms out. We'll do the right side first. So wrap your right arm under your left. So cross the elbows, palms come together, or remember, we can also always just do the opposite shoulder hold if necessary. And then as you inhale, lift your elbows to the ceiling. Now, as you do this, you'll find you'll take a little bit of a back bend. So keep pushing your hips forward, keep your tummy engaged. As you exhale, bow from the hip crease and take your elbows all the way down as if you're gonna brush the floor with them and then back through your legs as deep as you feel comfortable with. Then we're going to repeat it. So use your tummy strength and lift up, inhale all the way up. Take your elbows to the ceiling. Go back, push your hips forward, go back a bit more. Exhale slowly, really super slow. Take it all the way down. Good, we're doing one more. Inhale, lift it up. Really super slow, pushing your elbows to the ceiling. Go back, push your hips forward. And then exhale, take it all the way down. Okay, now you can either keep your arms as they are and just let gravity pull your arms down or you can release them and bring your hands to the floor. It's your choice. You may find that the feet want to go a little bit wider, but I want you to really put weight into the balls of your feet so you can lift your bottom a bit higher. So you really feel that super stretch coming through the back of the legs. And then if you want to, 
you can start walking your hands back between your legs and then turn your fingertips off the back of the mat and really grip the floor and pull, trying to pull the floor forward as you push your chest back and then you'll go deeper into it. So lifting the tailbone, go as deep as you want to. So this is, a, this is kind of the deep posture and you keep creeping your fingers back and going for it and weight is the balls of your feet. If your hands under your shoulders is enough for you, just stay there, just feel the stretch and breathe into it. We can always use blocks or something to bring the floor a little bit closer if we need to, if we're not that flexible in the hamstrings. And then breathe. And for those of you still wrapped in eagle, just let gravity do the work for you. Don't have to bother putting any effort in that way. Okay, so another two rounds of breath wherever you are. And then carefully release out, bring your hands so that they are underneath the shoulders and try and have a nice flat back position. So if we need to use blocks, we can have blocks in front. And then we're going to place the right hand directly underneath the face. And with the left arm, we're going to reach it up towards the ceiling to take a twist. So we're going to look towards that top hand. Now try and keep your hips nice and square. Get that vertical line with the arms again that we were doing earlier. And then as you inhale, reach higher. As you exhale, pull the right shoulder back. So your chest starts, your right chest, no, sorry, your left. You should be on your left. Your left chest starts opening towards the ceiling. Keep looking towards that top hand. And then exhale, carefully release. Good, let's change over. So place the other hand. So I think it should be your left underneath your face. Reach your right arm up. So going for that vertical line, so just as, as long as you've done both sides, that's fine. So reaching that arm up, looking towards the top fingertips and then reach them higher and then start pulling them even further back to really open up the chest towards the ceiling. Keep strong through the legs, keep strong through the core and keep the breath long and deep. Exhale, carefully release. Hands to the floor, bring them onto your hips. Use your tummy strength to lift you up and into a standing position. Well done. Now toe heel your feet in a touch. Not all the way, but until we have a shorter stance and now we're gonna, we are going to have duck feet this time. So 10 to two. And then from here, start with your hands on your hips and just bend the knees. And I want you to check that your knees are going in the same direction as your toes. And this is called a goddess squat. So we're working into the inner thighs. So from the side, we don't want this, okay? We want to tuck the tailbone and sit. And the shoulders are pushing back. So avoiding this position and keeping nice and tall through the spine. At any time you need to, you can just have a, a straighten and then a re-bend if it gets too much for the legs. Now we need to do eagle on the other side with our arms. So arms out, left under right and wrap. We're doing exactly the same thing. See if you can get your bottom as low as your knees if you really want to work your legs. Okay, so we've got our three lift and lowers. So inhale, lift your elbows to the ceiling. Exhale, round the spine, bring those elbows down. So you sit deep into the squat, good. Inhale, lift the elbows up. Exhale, bring them down. Good, one more. Inhale, lift up. Oh, those legs, <laughs> exhale round. Lovely, then bring yourself back up to neutral. Just straighten, keep the arms as they are, and then bend. And then see if you can sit down even deeper. Now push your elbows forward and really open up your shoulder blades. Get those elbows to shoulder height and sit deeper. Can you lift your left heel off the floor? And then put it back down. Can you lift your right heel off the floor? Awesome, put it back down, both. Lift them up, sit deeper. Oh, release your arms, lift up on the inhale, straighten your legs, give them a shake and let it go. Well done, give your legs a shake out. So hopefully we felt that in our thighs. I certainly did in mine. <laughs> Good, okay. Keep you, get you all set for half term anyway. Bring your feet together at the top of the mat. We're going to move towards the floor now. So take an inhale and lift up. And exhale, lower slowly. Bend your knees because you've worked your legs super hard today. Well done. And then just lengthen through the spine. Take a halfway lift. 
fold again. Brilliant. Step back into plank. And then lower yourself down all the way onto your tummy, coming down nice and slowly. Okay, we're just going to give the legs a bit of a stretch out. So bringing the left arm underneath you just to support you, bringing the right heel up. Now placing the hand on top of the foot with the elbow nice and high, we're trying to push the heel down just to the side of your bottom. So taking it out to the side, just pushing it down. At the same time, pushing your hips into the mat. So pubic bone goes into the mat and you should feel a stretch down the quad. Okay, so breathe. If you've worked those legs really super hard, so we're just gonna take just a moment to stretch them out and then release. Let's change. So right hand underneath you, left knee bends, place the left hand on top of the foot with the elbow high and then push the foot down by the side of the bottom. So for some of you, if you've got the range of movement here, your heel may touch the floor. Some of us, it may be miles away and one side is generally different to the other, but push the heel down at the same time, push your hips into the mat. So engage, push your pelvic bone, your pubic bone, sorry, into the mat. So you really feel that stretch down the front of the quads and then carefully release it. Bring your hands under your shoulders. We're going to come up into a kneeling position. All right. Now, if your knees, hips aren't very agreeable with this, you may want to grab a block or a cushion or something. So knees are about hip distance. Not even really slightly apart, like a fist's distance between your knees. So if I face you, just a slight distance between the knees and then moving the calf muscles out of the way, I'm going to sit my bottom down between my heels. Now, if this is really uncomfortable, pop your cushion or your block or blanket or whatever you're using underneath your bum. But if you have got like muscly calf muscles, Try and scoop them out of the way because it gives you a little bit more space to play with. All right, so the knees, slight gap. Sit between your heels. So the heels should be either side of your hips. All right, now we're trying to keep the knees down. So as soon as your knees start lifting, stop, don't go any further. So bring the hands behind you, fingertips pointing forward. This is another stretch for the front of the legs and for the feet. So fingertips are facing forward and then on the inhale we're going to lift the hips up. So whether the hips started on the floor, on a block or on a cushion, just lift your hips away from that object and then either look forward or if it feels okay you can let the head go back and just hang. And now breathe into the front of the body and really thrust your hips upward so you feel the stretch going down the front of the thighs, knees are staying down, breathe into it. Exhale, slowly release, bring your bottom down. Now do that one again, or if you want to go deeper, come down onto your forearms, but keep your knees on the mat. If your knees lift up, as soon as you come here, go back to the previous one, all right? But exactly the same thing again. Push and lift your hips up. So whether you're, whatever your hips started on, get some air underneath your hips. Lift them up, head can go back if it feels okay and just breathe into this front body stretch. So keep driving the hips up, feel that lovely stretch through the front of the legs and then carefully release. Bring your bottom down, bring your hands back to the floor if we were in the lower posture and then come forward into your tabletop and just release off the legs. Give your feet a little circle as well because it's quite compressing on the front of the feet and the ankles, that one as well. So just release off. Well done. Bring your hands onto the top of the mat. Let's push back into downward facing dog one last time. And then from here, we're going to do a little jump. And as we jump, we're going to cross our feet. So a little jump forward. So we can then sit our bottoms down. All right, so hopefully you are sat on your mat. Your legs, extend them out in front of you. And start off with nice flexed feet and engage your legs. 
All right, so make sure everything is nice and strongly engaged. Just sit up nice and tall, so try not to round through the spine. And then bring the right knee into your chest. Just give it a little hug and then drop it out to the side. So the sole of the foot is coming onto the inner thigh. Now flex your left foot, keep it nice and strong. Lift up on the inhale, arms reach up. As you exhale, fold and take hold of something, whether it's the foot or the shin or the knee, but just take hold of something and then try and push your chest towards your big toe. And then breathe. So we're just giving the hamstring a nice little stretch out. If your lower back is quite tight, then I would suggest you maybe just round and let your head drop down because then it'll take it out of the hamstring and just give you a nice stretch across the lower back. So whichever one you prefer. So either push the chest forward, keeping the toes pulling up towards your face or just relax off a touch and let the spine round and work into the lower back. And just breathe wherever you're working. Each exhale, you may go a little bit deeper into the stretch. Just be kind. At the same time, this knee keeps pushing down to the floor to get work into the hip as well. We're not working the hips too much today. Giving them a day off. <laughs> All right, inhale, lift up. Just take the left hand across onto the knee, take your right hand behind you and twist to look over your back shoulder. Keeping the left leg nice and straight and strong. Grow tall through the spine, pull the belly in as you exhale, twist a little deeper if you can. And then come back to center. Let's change those legs over. So extend the right leg, bring the left knee in and then drop it out to the side. The sole of the foot on the inside of the thigh. It doesn't have to be too high. If it's too much on the knee, it can be further down. Keep that right leg strong and straight as we reach up and then fold as you exhale. Remembering to choose which option works for you, whether it's the chest pushing forward, pulling the toes up, so working into the hamstring, or just soften and round. Let the head drop down and work with the lower back. Stretch. But keeping both hands equally on the foot. So you'll find that your right hand can reach the foot a little bit easier. But you really want to get the left hand to meet it as well so that we can work into the side body at the same time. Keep using that breath to take you deeper on the exhale. And you can swap and change between the different variations as well. There's no rule to say you've got to keep in one position all the time. Okay, go deeper and then carefully come back up, bringing the right hand across onto that knee, bring the left hand behind you and turn to look so twisting to look over left shoulder, keeping the spine tall and the neck nice and long. Push against that knee and twist yourself a touch deeper if you can. Keep the abdomen drawn in and you'll get a nice detoxification of the internal organs here. And then carefully just release to centre. Bring both knees into the chest. Give them a little hug. And then place the feet hip distance apart on the mat. Reach your arms forward. I'm going to just work into the core for a moment. So lifting through the chest, try and get the spine as long as you can. And then as you exhale, curl the spine and roll down one vertebra at a time, really super slowly all the way down. Take the arms up and over your head. Take that nice stretch, reach up and then inhale, slowly come up again and squeeze and hold here. So pushing the belly button down. So as much of your spine as is possible in, is on the mat. And then just really squeeze the core and reach those arms forward. Exhale, lower the shoulders down, take your arms up and overhead. So we're just coming up to that little crunch. Inhale, slowly roll up and then reach, push your belly button down. Make sure the spine is planted on the mat and reach, look forward, keep the space between chin and chest. Exhale, slowly lower, last one, reach the arms overhead. Breathe in, exhale, roll up, and squeeze and hold, and hold it there, and slowly release and let go. Well done, bring your heels in close towards your bottom, feet to hip distance, knees are tracking in the same direction as your toes, Arms come down by your side, palms facing towards the mat. Keep that space, chin and chest. Tuck the tailbones, tilt the pelvis, 
and then lift those hips up, pushing the floor away with your feet and just raising up into a bridge. Arms can stay on the mat. If you need a bit of support, the hands can just come on either side of the waist just to give you that support. We're just keeping pushing the floor away with the feet and then exhale, slowly roll the spine back down to the mat. We'll do two more of those. Inhale, tilt the pelvis, roll and lift the hips, come up. And then if you wish, you can interlace the hands underneath and roll your shoulders towards each other. So tuck those shoulders in. So we'll go deeper. Again, push into your feet, lift the hips. Keep the head looking towards the ceiling space between chin and chest. Breathe into your chest, lift those hips a touch higher if you can. Exhale, hands out of the way, slowly lower. Lovely, just have a rest at the bottom. We've got one more. Now, if you know wheel is part of your practice or crab as it was affectionately known when I was at school, um, then please feel free to do a wheel. It, I'm gonna just talk through bridge, okay? I'm not quite ready for a wheel today. But if you want to go for it, just be really mindful of your neck and your back, please. So starting by tilting the pelvis, raising the hips up. If you're going for your wheel, hands come next to the ears, fingertips point towards your shoulders. All right, if you're staying with me with bridge, let's interlace the hands underneath the back again, if you want to go a bit deeper and lift those hips, push the floor away with your feet. And then if you push into your left foot, see if you can take your right leg up towards the ceiling. Point the toes and push and lift those hips. And then bring that foot down. Now push into your right foot and lift the left leg up. So we're doing a leg lift, keep pushing the floor away with that other foot and release it down. Hands out of the way and slowly lower. Bring your bottom and your, all of your spine to the mat. Take your feet wider and just windscreen wipe the knees one way and then the other. Brilliant. Take both of your knees over to the left and just pause for a stretch there. So keeping the shoulders down on the mat, just feel the stretch there coming through the front side of the body and then take them to the other side. So both knees over to the left, to the right. Just make sure you've done both sides. It's Friday. And then bring it back to center. Lovely, bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze and a hug in. Have a little rock from side to side. And then just to decompress the spine after our back bends, take hold behind the back of the thighs and just roll your forehead up to touch your knees if you can. So squeeze into a nice tight ball. And then exhale, carefully lower. Drop your feet to the mat so they're mat distance apart. And you can either knock your knees together and stay there for your... Um, the guided meditation at the end, Shavasana, or you can slide your legs long and let your feet flop out. If we're going for the straight legs position, take the limbs a little bit wider than that distance to really get some space and open up the shoulders and the hips. But be comfortable if you want to put shoes on, uh, shoes, socks, jumpers, blankets, or anything, or maybe put some cu a cushion underneath your knees, please do so. Just like you to get into a really comfortable, cozy position. And we're going to take you through a, a guided meditation. So the main aim for meditation is to be comfortable and to try, if you can, to be still. You don't have to be still though. You can do a meditation walking. Um, for this one, I want you to try to be as still as you can, but if you do feel that you need to move and to fidget, then do so mindfully with the aim of becoming still once more. So if you do need to change position, then that's absolutely fine. So just get into a position where you feel nice and comfortable. And once you're there, just tune into your breath. Notice what's going on with the breath. Don't change it in any way. But just notice what's going on with the breath. And maybe if you want to, you could take a couple of cleansing breaths that I said about at the beginning. So breathing in through the nose and sighing it out through the mouth. 
it's quite a nice way to kind of arrive at your mat for a meditation because it just kind of gets rid of any stagnant energy but also just settles you into your relaxation so just breathe in through the nose sigh out through the mouth if you want to just relax release let go all right and then let your breath flow as it wants to now and for the whole of the meditation Scan your body from your head down to your toes and just notice what's going on for you physically. So after your practice, you may feel some energy, some slight tingling sensations within the body. You may feel some energy whizzing around. Or you may have some particular area that holds tightness or tension, or you may be carrying an injury perhaps. I want you to Start by just focusing on those areas. And just breathe into them. So as you inhale, imagine your breath reaching those areas. And if it is a particular area of tension or tightness, just imagine that, that tension, that tightness just dissolving as you feed it with your energy. It may take quite a few breaths to make it dissolve. That's fine. You've got time. And then use your exhale to be the release. It's often nice to visualize your mat being like a sponge that will take away from you anything that you don't need, whether that is physical tension or tightness, it can be emotions, it can be feelings or thoughts, but your mat is your sponge that's gonna take away whatever it is that you don't need anymore. It's not serving you right now, you don't need it. That includes any thoughts that aren't relevant to this practice. Just let them go, let them be absorbed by your mat. It's really nice to visualize them releasing into the mat and then just dissolving away. Okay, so starting at the crown of the head, bring your attention there and just soften off the muscles in your forehead the sides and the back of your head. And then the cheeks, just let go. The jaw can soften, the tongue can relax. Maybe the eyeballs could even become still so they're not darting around. Relax the muscles in your neck, around your throat. Soften and lengthen across your collarbones. Allow your shoulders to just relax and melt into your mat. Going down the length of your arms, your upper arms, your forearms, your wrists, the back of the hands, the palms of your hands and all of your 10 fingers. Just let them all soften and relax. Allow the weight of your arms to deepen and melt into the earth beneath you. Then soften the muscles across your chest and then across your abdomen, your mid back, into your lower back, your pelvis, let your hips soften and relax. Let everything go, let them become heavy. Let everything go. And then both buttocks, let them soften, be free from tension. The front of your legs, so into your powerful leg muscles, welcome in that relaxation. Your hamstrings, 
let them relax. Down your lower legs, your calf muscles into your ankles, the soles of your feet, the tops of your feet, and all 10 toes. Just let go, release, and relax. And then your whole body, from the crown of your head down to the tips of your toes, let your whole body be still and relaxed. Surrender completely to your mat. And just notice how this feels. And then to your mind. Has it suddenly got a bit busier with thoughts, with things to do? If it has, that's fine. Thoughts come, that's natural. But it's what you do with those thoughts. Just acknowledge them and then let them go. The same way as you relaxed all of your physical body. Just relax the mind as well. Let those thoughts enter, but then let them exit just as easily. Use your focus that you set at the start of practice to keep the mind from wandering. Or just focus on the inhale and the exhale. Just take this next minute to be with your thoughts and to be in mental and physical stillness. So remaining still in the physical body, just bring your focus just back to where you are, back to your practice, back to your breath, and back to your body. And we'll reawaken the physical body really slowly. So finding some small movements in a way that feels right for you, whether that is fingers, toes, just, just little wiggles to begin with. Maybe it's a stretch taking the arms overhead. Just find some movement that feels good. Slowly reawakening. Maybe bringing the knees into your chest and giving yourself a hug. You can rock from side to side. And then slowly roll onto your right side as you transition back to a seated position. So take your time. There's no rush, but we'll meet back in seated facing forwards. 
And when you're ready, bringing the hands into prayer at heart center. So pressing the thumbs into the sternum. So a tall spine, relaxed shoulders. Just check that the energy is equal within and around you. So the breath is even. Then just bow the head down slightly towards your fingertips. Just remember why you came to your mat today. And show gratitude for everyone who has shared this practice with you today. Show gratitude to yourself for making it to your mat today. Gratitude to your body. Gratitude to your breath. I thank you all for joining me and allowing me to guide you through your practice this afternoon. Namaste.